Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Clockwork Cantina, episode 150. I am 150. Josh Sano 2, and this is... Who are you, DT? I'm DT3. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? How are you all doing today? Hi, guys. Episode 150, the big 150. We're here. 150. Crazy to think about. 150 episodes. Hundreds and fitties and... <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. DT's camera's frozen for some reason. I don't, it was working literally before we went live. Fine. I don't know what happened. I, uh, I, I, I don't know what happened. I have not a clue. I uh, will try to figure this out. Hold on. Okay. Well, we got him. We'll, he'll be working on that. But this... Yeah, you can hear me, though. So that's good. We can hear you. So that's good. Um, yeah, no joke. Literally working just fine before we flopped over i don't know what happened it could be maybe it's uh maybe it's this thing maybe i can uh take you away and put you back and hold on uh I, I, maybe i have to mess with it on my end okay uh anyway while dt works on that guys it's episode 150 can't believe we've done this many we're halfway to 300 which is crazy but um but yeah it's Pretty fucking dope that uh, we've been doing this for 150 episodes with me and like one of my best friends, DT, over here. Um, hey, sure. you're not frozen anymore. Awesome. We're back. Uh, uh, this episode is one that we've kind of started doing in the last couple of years. We call our March Madness Bracket episodes. As the you can March see Madness behind episode. me, behind me, I have last year's uh, bracket as my background right now with the, my ultimate winner um for yeah, that one that was the one we did last time and for me i have a blank background because i don't know what we're doing today i don't know what the <laughs> bracket true. is because this time around it was josh's choice uh so we're gonna find out what that is in the second half of the show but oh uh, i'm so excited i hope it's fun for, for now yeah we got we got news and, and and other things to to get to but yeah i'm, I'm hyped man these these march madness brackets are always fun to do we kind of every time we do one we rotate between the two of us. So last year, or last time I did it, and then now it's Josh's turn. And you know, kind of like uh, how we do with the uh, the uh, retro rewind, uh, you know, every every month as well. So, <laughs> or whenever we can do them, you know, every uh, you know, we rotate. So yeah, it'll be fun, fun. And fun. and if you want to follow along and fill out the bracket as we do, there will be a blank I will put in DT's Discord once we have. The participants of said bracket all scrambled up. I will throw it in his Discord over here so you guys can yeah. download a copy and fill in yourself as we go because that's part of the fun. Also, happy birthday to our good friend, Majin Sean. Make sure to check out his Majin, streams. Man. It's our boy. Happy he, birthday. Love you. Shout out to him. He's a, he's, a, he's a good homie, man. He is. He is. He is. Um, all right. Let's get into a DT because we're a little late today and that's my fault. But. We always we're doing the show anyway, even though we're late. We're uh, we're late live, <laughs> but we're never late on the YouTube or any other place. So <laughs> a YouTuber arrives you. <laughs> precisely when he means to, which is the yeah. next day after the show. Um, let's yeah, go ahead and hop uh, into it, DT. <laughs> let's do it. What have you so, been up to this past week? What have I been up to? I've been watching more movies, uh, playing some games. Um, so you guys know. If you guys have been watching every episode uh, weekly, um, you will see that um, last week's episode was um, uh, L.A. Confidential. It was it was my retro rewind pick uh, of the uh, you know for for for, the, for that time. Uh, So we were talking about how at the time there, you know, Russell Crowe and Guy Pierce were not as well known over here, at least in the States, you know, probably in Australia, they were doing their thing, you know, and they were known over there, but out here, they probably wouldn't have been as known. And Josh, was, and we were talking about like what we, what we would have seen them if any, if anything, I wouldn't have seen them in anything before that. But Josh was like, there's this little movie in 1995 <laughs> called Virtuosity. So what did I do? I watched that movie, and boy, let me tell you, that movie is fucking weird, man. 
Never that said it movie was good. is cuckoo bananas, <laughs> dude. It is weird. I mean, you got it's Russell Crowe with a with a purple ass suit walking out to staying alive, bro. Like that shit is <laughs> that shit is nuts, man. Uh, it is not a good movie. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was something, man. I, I can say I've seen it. Also, Denzel is in it too. You know, uh, he's more of the main guy in that movie, but uh. Yeah, it was it was something, man. It was like if you're looking for a crazy ass movie to, to talk to like that, uh, then yeah, it's, uh, definitely get, check that out. Give give it a shot, you know, because it's, uh, it's 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 something. It'll be it'll be some for you to experience. That's for sure. But I watched that, and then uh, I. Uh, watched all three of the naked gun movies because i felt like watching some silly goofy ass funny humor like that man those movies are they're <laughs> i just love stupid silly humor like that and some of the shit they say would not fly nowadays but like you gotta you gotta know going into that that's kind of what you're gonna get you know and those movies also have oj in them before he did what he did so it's like you know if that if that weirds you out uh and messes with you just also know that going into it beforehand um but yeah i watched those movies those were pretty funny um i watched uh the two ultimate avengers movies um they were all right I mean, I feel like they're not the best I've, um, animated superhero Marvel stuff. Like I've seen better. They're okay. Um, I <clears throat> watched uh, Creed 2 finally. It's been one that I've been meaning to watch. We watched that one. We checked it out. Now we're caught up and ready to watch Creed 3 whenever because that just came out, like, I want to say a few days ago, like last week. Um, so... Yeah. And then I was continuing with my Oscar nominated movies and films and stuff. So I watched uh, Fire of Love, which was also really good. It's about uh, a couple who are who are volcanologists. Um, it's more of a documentary, you know, because you get to see kind of the footage that they took and you get to learn about their lives and what they did and how they met and, you know, all the way up until they died together, um, um, you know, doing what they love. So pretty good. I would recommend that one if you're into, uh, you know, documentaries like that. Um, and then I watched half baked cause again, more in the mood of watching silly, stupid humor and like kind of like naked gun in that, in that vein. So watched, watch that. And then, uh, TV show wise, Rewatched Mando season two in time for the Mandalorian season three, which I also watched the first episode of very good, very good. Fantastic. Uh, first episode. I can't wait for episode two here in a few days. And you bet we're going to be doing an episode on that when it's when the season's all over, but I'm so glad to have the Mandalorian back. I've been waiting and we're going to have some good stuff in store for us this season. And I can't wait to talk about it and watch it. Bad Batch. Newest episode, phenomenal, fucking great. They, uh, without saying too much, they brought back something in the Star Wars, which we haven't seen in like over a decade. That's all I'm going to say. Really good. Uh, can we talk about that as well? And then, uh, and then The Last of Us was the last TV show that I watched this uh, past week. The newest episode of The Last of Us. Episode 8 dropped yesterday. Watched that. Really, really intense. Really, really good. Um, if you've been keeping up, you know where we are in the story of the game and everything, and you knew it was going to be a doozy, uh, and it, and it was, and there's only one episode left. So guess what that means? Next week, we're going to be doing the episode for The Last of Us. So, uh, you know, cat, if you haven't seen it, watch it or catch up, and then we'll talk about it next week. Um, and then video game wise, I've been playing uh, Fortnite. I'm excited for the new season to start here in a few days, in a couple days. It's gonna be fun. Uh, they're bringing back some cool stuff too. Um, 
Phasmophobia. I played that for a little bit uh, with some friends and it was pretty good. It was pretty fun playing that again. Uh, I played and streamed and beat all of the original Mafia. Uh, I played the uh, Definitive Edition, however, not the original original, but it was the first game. Had a great time with that one. That's a fun, fun game. That was very beautiful and gorgeous with the with the new remake. Definitely recommend it. Been playing some more Sons of the Forest. Um, although I don't want to get too ahead of myself with that because you know I'm on like several ser- I'm, I'm on several servers now, like with friends and other people and whatnot. And I've been doing more a lot of the same stuff with like you know, anytime you join a new server, you go into the caves and build the base and. So it's been a lot of that repeat stuff over and over again for me with that game, really. And, um, yeah, I don't want to do too much story stuff because it's an early access and a lot of it isn't done yet. So it would make no fucking sense to play and beat the game like some of these uh, bigger streamers have done, you know, because it's an early access game and it's not all complete yet. So why would I want to play something that's not complete anyway or beat something that's not complete? But, uh, yeah, play that. Play a little bit of Hunt Showdown. That game's fun. Play a little bit of a, the, 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 the Division 2, although I've kind of slowed down playing that one. Um, but yeah, it was still, I still do play it from time to time as well. I started playing Yakuza 0. Uh, that's the next game on stream that I've been doing. We're going to be playing more of that tomorrow. If you want to check it out live, come join for that. Um, but that's been that's been fun, but man, it's so long. These chapters are so long, dude. I feel like... I was anticipating playing like two chapters per stream before I started playing it. But now that I've played it, I've come to the very, uh, very real, real, you know, and quick realization that I I can only play one chapter a stream because they're so fucking long and the cutscenes are long and all that stuff. And like, I don't normally wouldn't mind it, but man, some of this stuff was like a little bit longer than I wish it would be. And and granted, I have been doing some of the side stuff too, so it's not like I've just been doing, like sticking to story and nothing else. But mm-hmm. yeah, some of it is 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 a little longer than I wish it would be, but but it's all right. We're I'm having fun. I'm enjoying the game so far, so it's not it's no it's not a big deal. And then literally last night, I was playing. I played. I I booted up Project Zomboid for the first time in like over a year, I think. Because I started playing on another friend's server, and she started, she has one up for her community, so I joined it for a little bit, and yeah, maybe I'll, I'll probably be playing a little bit more of that uh, when whenever they play, uh, you know, the next you know good while here. Um, but yeah, that's kind of pretty much been what I've what uh, pretty much what I've been up to. So take it away, Josh. Let let the people know what you've been doing. Um, okay, for me, it has been... I'll start with the game first. Um, Sons of the Fir- Forest, like DT, just been... I Pretty much his exact words, what I've been doing. Just popping around, playing with friends, doing the same thing over and over again, not worried about doing st- the story or anything like that. Uh, it's like one of the games I've started over the most times in, the, in recent memory, just because we... We hop on somebody's server and do all the same stuff and build up and have a good time. So, uh, I think that speaks volumes about the game that you can just hop into anybody's game, start over from the beginning, and still have a ton of fun doing it, even though you've done it before. Um, then the other thing I've been playing is <clears throat> Diablo 3 as a new season that started, and we have the Diablo 4 like beta this month and i thought you know i'm gonna hop on diablo 3 and mess around with the new season so i've been playing that <clears throat> i i'm i'm running a um a barbarian in the new season and uh I'm doing like a boulder toss build that's a lot of fun i was lucky i had a friend that ran me <clears throat> that helped me power level up and and get some gear and stuff so my build has come together and it's finally like I'm kicking ass with it is basically what I'm getting at. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm really curious to check out that Diablo 4 like beta later this month and see how that feels and stuff. So, Because I'm, I'm kind of interested in it. Um, in terms of watching things, I've watched Last of Us, episodes 7 and 8, because I I, uh, last week when we did the show, I hadn't seen episode 7 yet. I've seen it. 
I've seen episode eight. Can't wait till next week when we get to do our show on it so we can talk about it. It'll be fun. Uh, Mando is back. Watched episode yeah. one of that with the homies. Um, and it is awesome. I love Mando being back. It feels like it's been a fucking lifetime, I know. Uh, so it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's awesome that it's uh, here. Should have Bob on for Last of Us. <laughs> That'd actually be kind of cool. Um, uh, watched uh, Creed 2. Uh, that was fun. Hadn't seen it before. Uh, and I, I like a good sporting boxing movie. Um, and Bad Batch, you guys knew I'd fallen behind on Bad Batch. I'm I'm still a little behind, but only like, like with one episode because I watched episodes seven, eight, nine, and ten the other day uh, while I was up doing this next thing, which is tabletop prep. We are prepping to run a Star Wars fantasy flight game, and I am getting my foundry ready. I'm I'm going over the rule book because it's been a few years since we've run that game, and I gotta refresh the rules a little bit, although. I feel like the main focus of that game is not on the rules. You get that from reading the book. Um, story first t- type deal. So that's kind of why my sleep schedule is really boned. Because uh, I stay up part of the night playing games with friends and the rest of the night prepping <laughs> the stuff to play the game. So like DT can attest, I've, 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 been, I've been working. I've been working real hard on it. Um, yeah. So... That's kind of all I've been up to this past week. Um, I'm, I'm playing around with uh, an idea I had as well. Uh, last uh, last night. So, well, I'll give you more info, guys, on that if I decide to move forward with this. It's not a super secret project, but I'm not telling what it is either. Um, but but yeah, that is. That is what I've been up to this past week, DT, as usual, hanging out with friends, uh, including yourself and our Discord friends and playing games and all that. Let's go ahead and hit the news, DT. Are you ready to get into some news, my friends? We can get to this bracket. I know the suspense is killing everybody about this bracket. They don't know what it is. (laughs) The mystery bracket. This is is the first time we've done one where it's like, even I don't know what it is. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I think in the past, we kind of have gone into it and been like, all right, this is what we're doing this time. And now it's like, oh, mystery bracket. Obviously, when uh, when this is uploaded to, you know, whatever we, you know, all the places we uploaded to, it'll it'll have the title on it. But for yeah. now, we, I don't know what it is. But anyway, if you're ready, Josh, we can let's, go. Let's do it. Into the game of news. All right. So. First up, our first piece of gaming news is uh, Final Fantasy 16 Dungeon Exploration and Boss Fight. So it's a little bit of gameplay here. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, videos and, and information lately um, for this game right now. Uh, but we're just going to check out one of them for, for now. And it's a, and it's a little, little bit of gameplay here. Uh, and some dungeon exploration. So, Josh, if you want to uh, throw it up, it's this is coming to us from uh, the people over at Game Informer. They got a little little video up. Um, so yeah, let me. Uh, I'm ready when you're ready. Let's check it out. All right, it's, we're not gonna watch the whole thing because it's a very long video. Well, very long, but it's like it's like 24 minutes. But we'll watch some of it and we'll, we'll skip through it as well. But we can start in three, two, one. Hello, hello, welcome to New Gameplay Today. I am your host, Wesley Nablon, and today I'm joined by Game Informer's very own Kyle Hilliard. Hello. And we are joined by a very special guest, Jesse Vitelli from Prima Games. How you doing? Good, good. How's it going, everybody? It is going great, and that is because we are checking out Final Fantasy 16. Um, I went hands-on recently for about two hours with this game, and Jesse did too. We were at the same event Um, And what you're going to be watching here today is essentially what we played through, um, at least like the first uh, bit of what we played through. Um, Jesse, just right off the top of your head, like what what are your thoughts on Final Fantasy 16? Do you like it? Do you not like where it's going? What are you thinking? I I really like it. Uh, It 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 feels the combat feels visceral in a way that I'm excited about. I feel like they finally got the action combat 
you know, correct. Um, so I know yeah, Josh, you're looking forward to this game. I am. That's why I'm kind of sucked in this video. Really like, me. Yeah. let me see everything yeah, going on in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's um, been talks of like this game not being released right away immediately on PC. It'll be like a PlayStation exclusive for a little while. I know some people are disappointed about that, but you know, they're, that's what they're focusing on is a PlayStation. In case anybody out there is wondering. In this game are very apparent. Like, I wrote in my preview, if you're a fan of Devil May Cry, you're going to feel right. Yeah, at six, six months at least. Yeah, um, it's fast paced. It's combo heavy. And um, Jesse, I think you actually put a story out this morning that said there's going to be an arcade mode um, with the game, too, right? Yeah. So, you know, we, we had a chance to talk to, to the dev team a little bit and they were mentioning that and then these guys uh, are talking about arcade mode, want like more of uh, a challenge and then some post game stuff. They're going to be having a bunch of different game modes similar to Devil May Cry in, in a lot of ways. And there's going to be an arcade mode where you can, you know, go for a high score and there'll be global leaderboards. Then you can sort of like, you know, try to get the best score out of your friends and, and everyone else and, and really kind of master the combat. Mm hmm. Yeah, if you're looking for that kind of like grade after your combat, that's going to be an arcade mode thing. Um, uh, so, Kyle, what, what? Tell me your history with Final Fantasy. Oh man, it's a weird one. I, I kind of consider myself a recent fan, if that makes sense. Like okay. I, I have always dabbled with Final Fantasy, even back to like the Super Nintendo days, but never really finished any of them. Um, and then Final Fantasy 15 was actually the first one I saw credits on, despite oh. having played every other one at some capacity. And then I played uh, Remake 2, or sorry, uh, 7 Remake. I don't know why I said Remake 2, but... And so, like, with the announcement of 16, I was kind of like, all right, I consider myself a fan now. I'm excited for this. And, like, the wild thing about watching this, I just have so many questions right off, off the bat, is, like... I, if, if I didn't know this was Final Fantasy, I would not have guessed this was a Final Fantasy game. Like, that combat just looked like straight-up action. There yeah. were, like, you know, there were QTEs to pass through the doors. It looks like you have a pet wolf. Um, I thought you had, like, a little Ocarina of Time-style Navi at the beginning, but I guess that was just, like, a lamp <laughs> or something that you turned off and you didn't need it anymore. Yeah, you can kind of, you can press, I forget the button, but you press the button and it kind of guides you where to go. Um, I don't think it's, like, a... Uh like a being or anything correct me right it's just a little flame no it's just yeah. like, it's, it's just i, I like appreciate that like they can go it's in so many weird directions but you guys like, should definitely go check yeah, this, this video the out on the channel finish, itself like, you go to youtube crazy like uh the game informer YouTube, youtube channel that's, that's you where know. you can find the whole video yeah, it's a, exactly and um, it's a 24 minute video so there's a lot on here that you can check out like i said we're not gonna watch the whole thing we'll probably skip through here whenever josh wants to skip through it yeah we're probably good to start skipping actually because there's a there's a support yeah we're talking about here soon uh, that's a cutscene. I don't think we want to watch automatically cut attack, or you can kind of choose what he does. Um, at least for me, I didn't worry about him too much. Although he seems like a nice companion. Let's Jesse, skip ahead you, to about twelve minutes. Table? DT, it's where yeah, I'm gonna go. So one of the big things right, is like for this good. game is like you don't. It was nice. The problem I ran into a little bit was that the threshold was pretty low, so I, it ended up using yeah. all of my potions. So here's a little bit more of the combat. And so when I got into some of the harder fights in the demo, I was like, Oh no, I'm out of healing items. I need to turn this accessory off. Yeah. Uh, it keeps using all my potions. Um, and there's a few other ones that I played around with a little bit, but I, I wanted to turn them off after a while and just really see how that com uh, combat feels without any added support. Yeah, there's another one that um, basically right before an enemy's attack lands with you, it kind of it slows the game down, but it basically pauses and um, it lets you hit the dodge button like much easier it shows like a big red circle that you know disappears over time and you have that much time to press r1 to dodge super easily which is nice because you'll be dodging a lot and then um I'm trying to think of what the other one oh, oh, there you go. Go. Look at that. perfect look at that um yeah that's a <laughs> cinematic a evasion a, like a qte in the <laughs> yeah this is so like, like that, a QTE that'll in show combat. up in like proper combat as well. Yeah, that exact same okay. R1 thing will yeah. show up. It'll just be a little less cinematic. They, they have these things called cinematic strikes, which yeah. are cinematic are strikes. Like, you know, PTs, uh, and some of them will be, oh, you hit square and you'll like attack and do and do this thing, and then other ones are, like hit R1 and you'll dodge and and you get points for them on the side. You get you can see the names of things popping up. Mm -hmm. yeah, what's the dog's name? Is it Torgal? Is that what you said? Torgal. Torgal. I cannot. Or 
Nazi Twilight Princess Wolf Link. Like it just looks so <laughs> close to it. I like I think even some of the coloring is the same. But every you know, time I'm already it pops about up this in game. the background of a cutscene as we're watching this, like, right? Oh, what, it's your boy Link's Torgo the in there. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing in this one? I want. Yeah, I wish I would have noticed that because you are. It is like more similar to not. I wonder if yeah. that's a, a nod to to that or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So one thing I want to point out here that we haven't touched on is the. So we talked about the iconic abilities that you use with Circle, which lets you, you know, uh, do the dash teleport or use Garuda's Claws to draw enemies in. But you can also equip with each Titan or with each icon you have um, on your weapon wheel down there. Right now it's Titan. You have like two abilities you can use. Um, the Titans is like a big rock hammer, which is probably my favorite because when you use it, you have to hold down. Was it R2, Jesse? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was the, the strike button. Yeah, you use uh, R2, wheel. and then a wheel pops up, and if you let go of R2 while the wheel is at, like, a certain area, it does, like, extra damage, which it just, it's, it feels good. It's nice to have a little timeliness um, added into those combos like that. And then the Phoenixes were just kind of, like, these big, flashy, like, fiery AoE kind of attacks where you can, like, pulverize an enemy into the air. And then I don't actually remember what Garuda's abilities were. The, the claws that spin around you and throw an enemy that's up right. into the air. And then the other one that's just like a rapid strike claw attack. It was like very, very fast paced Garuda attacks. Yeah, that's right. Um, and yeah, you can equip two of those at a time. I kind of messed around in the menus a bit. There wasn't, we couldn't really do too much to change anything, but. Let's skip um, ahead to yeah, about icon. 17 and a half PT because it looks like this is a really long cutscene. around the combat. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to spoil yeah, story stuff. Right, you don't want no story oh, stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. This, this preview was very focused on the combat. but Like, the, like, the like I said earlier, if you guys want to watch it on your own, dungeon, go go to their YouTube very channel very and check it out for yourself. RPG, sort of side content focused. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that stuff is, is definitely in there. Got a boss battle going. But they were like, yeah, no, we really just wanted to focus on getting everybody acclimated to this this new combat system mm -hmm. yeah and so so like are you someone with final fantasy where you kind of yearn for it to be turn-based again or are you on board with this i mean it's been shifting to action like this for i don't know a decade now yeah uh i definitely like turn-based combat um but i think in more modern iteration like especially after seven remake and how good that combat felt and sort of just the flow of it uh, they, not that they had to prove to me, but they, they, it felt like they proved to me like, no, we can do like real time, co like action combat. And then mm -hmm. with this, there was like, no, look, we can really do action combat. And so, the little I'm, static I'm on this guy's this, microphone this is driving me cool crazy. I just want to say that, forever, <laughs> like, come on, my man, I'm, you're killing I'm me. Bored. Yeah. And I mean, it seems like it, it, it doesn't feel like necessarily that this is like an indictment of Final Fantasy. Like it's going to be full action moving forward. I think it's just that you bring on Suzuki, um, like you make it Devil May Cry esque. Like why hire that kind of talent and then not utilize you know their best efforts? And I think that's just part of how this game came to be so action heavy. Yeah, uh, they they had mentioned um, in in the interview that younger audiences are not necessarily playing a lot of Final Fantasy and so it was kind of finding that way to bridge the gap between like veteran fans and a, like a newer audience and how action combat you damn know, that wolf got it, fucked the, up the feedback no is immediate everything is it, there's this immediacy to it and you know me going like that no like this, me this feels like the right the right step <laughs> and you know what they're they're doing a cool thing you know, it's funny. Yeah. Not, not that I had any doubt that this was it. Bene Benedicta it was a villain. But they're like, just to make sure you guys know, she's gonna hit the dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She. Um. This this fight was probably my favorite thing that we played through. Uh -huh. Uh. One because it was, for me the, at least, the most challenging. Um combat scenario and then i also just anyway i think we like, can probably stop you yeah. watching this here you think? we've watched enough of that but, but you guys like i said watch yeah. the whole thing if you want to there's a little bit of there's a little bit of final fantasy 16 with the dungeons and the boss fights and all that so a lot of information on it right now definitely go check it out if you're into that we're gonna move on from here now though yes sir. Other stuff to get to. there's other news guys we gotta, we gotta do other news but uh, yeah, I think the game looks pretty, pretty solid so far.
Yeah, my only concern is I don't want them to overdo the QTE bit because that can be a little. I don't know. It kind of takes me out of the game sometimes. But I get, I get that it's there for like cool cinematic moments. I just don't want them to overdo it. Uh, so that would be like my one concern, at least from watching that video. <clears throat> but we'll see. All right, DT, what do we got next? Next up, uh, Elden Ring, the official Elden Ring Twitter, announced that there is an upcoming expansion coming for the game called Shadow of the Erd Tree that is currently in development. Rise, Tarnish, and let us walk a new path together. We hope you look forward to new adventures in the lands between. They got a little image there uh, with the earth tree in the back and a bunch of like, you know, graves and stuff. And then there's a lady on a horse, which, uh, you know, I believe is Michaela. Uh, but yeah, new Elden Ring DLC coming out. People are getting excited. Uh, we'll see when, when, when this drops, you know. Sometime this year, I'd, I'd imagine, maybe. I don't know. Mayhap. Well, it's a thing. Mayhap. I know. Pe I know people been waiting on that, so it's finally mm -hmm. confirmed. Finally confirmed. But uh, yeah. Cool. The next thing we got here is Telltale Games delaying The Wolf Among Us 2. Um, if you guys know me, you know that The Wolf Among Us, the first one is my favorite Telltale game. Um, and I've been waiting about 10 years for this game. But that also means if I've waited that long, I could wait a little bit more. <laughs> but this is what they put out in a tweet. Telltale Games said, we've made the difficult decision to delay The Wolf Among Us 2. For more context, we've spoken with IGN. So they have a little article here with IGN. But in the little image here, it says, an important update for The Wolf Among Us 2. We've made the difficult decision to delay it out of 2023. We know it's frustrating to hear. We started work on this in 2020, and we're still determined to tell the ongoing story of Big B and the rest of the Fable Town gang. However, it's going to require more time as disappointed as you are hearing this, we feel worse having to say it, but the work continues. We're committed to delivering the sequel fans deserve and doing what's right for the game while protecting the health of our team. We appreciate your patience and understanding, Telltale Games. Um, so yeah, they spoke to IGN, and they basically are saying, uh, you know, making games is difficult. They need the time to do you know to make it right and uh you know it doesn't do them any good if they're gonna ship out a game that isn't ready um uh, progress has been you know proceeding well but recently they made the decision to switch from ue4 to ue5 uh and because the unreal 5 has a number of interesting features that many on his team especially engineers and artists feel that are worth the effort, um, but that means they're going to have to re redo quite a bit of work that was already done in UE4. Um, and uh, they say, with that in mind, there, there could have only been two ways to meet the 2023 release window. One option would have been to ship something unfinished, uh, and the other would be crunched. But, uh, you know, for, you know, the health of, of the team and everybody else, they, uh, you know, Yeah, it's not something they want to do again. But uh, yeah, like I said, I love the first game. I've waited ten years for this one. I could wait a little bit more, man. I, 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 you know, I hope they give us the best game they they can possibly make. Uh, action RPG Atlas Fallen is going to be arriving in May. Um, the game was revealed during last year's Gamescom. 
and centers on players manipulate uh, players manipulating sand to explore and survive in a fantastical desert world. The game supports single player and two player co op. It takes place in a massive sand covered world filled with monsters and gods. You'll take them down using shape shifting weapons born out of the sand and other customizable magical abilities. Um, so yeah, the game will be coming out on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC on or in May. So there isn't like an exact date, but it's coming out. Target date is in May. So that's that's cool. I, I know this is one of the games that we had kind of uh mentioned and talked about a little bit when it was like first announced. So like maybe interesting that maybe had potential, you know. So we'll have to see what yeah. uh we'll we'll continue to keep uh you know an eye on this and uh, we'll see what happens and we'll see what comes what, what gets me is like it's coming out in May, which is like what, two months and I don't know. Yeah. Like, really anything about it other than what we saw in that trailer? I don't feel like there's been any previews or anything like that about it, so. Interesting. I hope we get some more details before release. Yeah. Because I would like to know more. That would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, because, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've seen, like, like, I don't think we've seen, like, gameplay yet, right? Not really. Saw I feel like all was, we saw was the was trailer. Like a, yeah, it was like an announcement trailer, basically. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, maybe it's out there, but I just haven't seen it. Same. Maybe it isn't out there, and we just, you know, we're still waiting on that. But um, yeah. Moving on, we have a Dead Island Two extended gameplay reveal trailer. We can check out. Let's do it. It's dropped uh, several days ago. And uh, this is another, you know, a little bit of a longer 14-minute video. If you guys want to check it out, go over to the PlayStation channel and watch it all yourself. We're probably not going to watch all of it, but we'll watch some of it. And, yeah, let's uh, check it out. Three, two, one, go. What? What you're about to see is a short work-in-progress preview of Dead Island 2 gameplay. And just a glimpse of the Our journey starts in Bel Air, just a few hours after the introduction of the game. Bel Air. Infected, Let's go. but somehow immune to the zombie Game's virus. still in development. Footage Our subject to goal change. Is to reach the authorities at the Halperin Hotel, an evac center south of here in Beverly Hills. Evac center this way. Halperin Hotel. Beverly Hills. Between our roster of six slayers, we've selected Danny. A foul-mouthed brawler from Ireland with a twisted sense of humor. She's a tenacious yet balanced character, well suited to an agile style of combat. Oh shit, the drop kick, always fun. I don't know why I expected this to be darker. Stay it's so bright. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like strike will be key to survive with this playstyle. Punch. Punch, punch. Stop. Stop. Oh, yeah, there you go. Everything. Each of our slayers have different personalities, stats, and starting abilities. But thanks to our flexible skill system, you can personalize... You know, I would say why, there's a, why is there an Irish girl over here in L.A., but we got actors and actresses and all kinds of people out here, so... Whatever. Let's pause a second. Thanks to our revolutionary oh, dismemberment technology. Ew. Flesh, oh, look at that. Bones, oh, that's, that's cool, dude. Melting zombies will always look bloody. You can melt them now? Oh, shit. Look at that. This realistic locational damage is not only for show. Locational allow damage. To okay. Strategically target the individual that's cool, dude. You can, like, shoot their leg bones. off, man. That's cool, man. I like that. That's nice. Despite the outbreak, our world is alive and kicking with oddball survivors and crazy oh. side quests to complete. Are you still out there? Hey, can you hear me? Blasted. Hello? Don't run away. We need to help each other. Let's ignore this request for now and continue towards the Halper and Hotel. I should check my map. <laughs> okay. All these streets look the same. The road to Beverly Hills is just the beyond map that looks, mansion. Uh, interesting. Not one to pass up a shortcut. 
Oh shit. Seems a runner, like oh hell no, bro. Uh, but we should be careful nonetheless. <laughs> bro, how are you gonna choose a hammer over a katana? I think that's why. Sometimes it's best to choose when and when not to engage. So let's try to find some shelter. If you feel the urge to fight, though, our world is filled with tons of exciting weapons, each with their own unique and brutal fighting style. Can you throw the hammer too? Like, you just, we know we saw how she threw the the knife earlier, but can you throw the hammer as well? Or is it only like certain For weapons? For some satisfying dismemberment, bladed weapons are always king. And oh, thanks yeah, to our buddy. flesh system. Cutting there through zombies with your katana feels as smooth as slicing butter. Nice. Oh, there goes an eyeball. Yeah, there goes a head. For some tactical crowd control, look no further than strong, heavy oh, tools. Oh, sledgehammer time. Like sledgehammer. Bail. These to really feel each hit on that one. Damn. Oh, what weapons like this oh. are perfect for crushing bones and clearing a path. Get out the way, bitch. Alongside a copious amount of melee weapons. Guns offer a powerful addition to your arsenal. Capable of slaying oh, long range targets and triggering AK, shotguns, every trap very and nice snipers. Bunch of weapons with different types of ammo, too. Looks Just like. be careful not to waste too many bullets while you're having fun. Okay, back on track to get to this hotel of theirs. Smells like me ma's boiled stew. We found the yeah. evac checkpoint. The road to Beverly Hills <laughs> is just up ahead. Things Beyond are about this to get point, a Beverly lot rougher, Hills. So we should upgrade our weapons and equip ourselves for the challenges ahead. Let's see upgrade system. With workbenches cool. scattered all over Los Angeles, players can retrofit their tools with DIY mods and perks, creating the most obnoxiously crazy weapons. From flaming oh, wow. katanas to electrified daggers and exploding hammers. The possibilities are endless, and the outcome. I got Wolverine claws. Let's go. Yeah, I was gonna say that, dude. Nice. Here we go. About to see him in action. It looks like. Like Ooh. most of the districts in LA, yeah. there are multiple nice. pathways we can take to reach our destination. With yeah, I gotta to say, this game looks pretty cool so far. And stashes to uncover. Yeah, no, this looks great. Venturing off the beaten path has its benefits. This one Sounds video has like managed to do more for party. me than Redfall has done after years. <laughs> All right. <Hello. laughs> Don't want to buy a game. This makes me want to play uh, the other two games too, because I haven't played the, the the first Not a the, the first two. Pizza. Hey, pizza. Do you have pizza? Of course I do. Now let us in. Uh, yeah. Well, if I open this door, a whole load of zombies might rush in, and I'm pretty sure that's a, a bad thing. Then why have you left the gate wide open? Oh, yeah. Well, we're having this big party, right? And some of the guys, not, not me, were riding on a gate, and, and, and it broke. Now, there's a whole bunch of spares in the garage, but it's, like, full of riffraff. Fine. I'll give closing it a lash. So much riffraff. Oh, killer. I'll hit the garage button. You bounce the party crashers and fix things up, and then, dude, Mikasa is is uh, your casa. Hey, Roxy, we got company. Find your jeans. Oh. We've agreed to fix the rock stars gate. Time to go to work. Hell yeah! Fighting music. Rusher, right Jump gear walker. <laughs> Ooh. With dozens of Grinny grenadiers, I would said. Oh, yeah. Each undead archetype you encounter presents a unique challenge with different strengths and weaknesses to overcome. Okay, okay, okay. This has been Man, I can't believe they made me a zombie and put me in the game. game. Look how jacked I am. <laughs> oh, man. Bye bye to this jaw. Turned him into Malik real quick. 
This will work. Oh, Dang. nice. I'm liking these finishing uh, kill moves here. To better face this zombie horde, we expanded the equipment at the player's disposal. Curveballs are a brand new, exciting addition, offering both lethal and tactical Curveballs. advantages. Take meat bait, for example. A nasty sack of blood and guts meat that can draw zombies away from you. Hmm. Perfect for some gruesome nice, distraction. Nice, nice. Very cool. Perfect face. Genius. Hey, were you getting the pizza or were you fighting zombies in the yard? Feeding pizza to the zombies. Oh, right. You say pizza? Right. No pizza. Sorry, man. Big evacuation party, you know. Oh, shit. We gotta get to the. Oh, evac. man. Roxy? A little bit of a tumble. Roxy, hey. We should get back on track to the evac center. From the All right, we'll probably Hollywood stop it there, Hills but that. <laughs> Venice Beach. That was pretty good. That looks pretty fun, man. I, I want to play that. Bell that looks cool. Yeah, that looks cool. Like I yeah, said, we. So kind of sold play, me on the uh, game. Yeah. I uh, I want to play the other ones. I have Dead Island, the the definitive edition, and then Riptide definitive editions on Steam, and that yeah, makes me want to play those. Uh, and I was talking to Josh about me doing co-op on those eventually. So yeah, that, 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 that could be fun. But uh, yeah, the second one looks looks great. It looks really really cool. Definitely uh, was on my radar before, and now I'm even more interested in it as well. So. Mm -hmm. uh, next up. Uh, Dig Osmussen, director of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor uh, of Respawn Entertainment, wants the series to be a trilogy. He said in an interview with IGN Unfiltered. Um, he says um, he says that the idea of Cal's story has always been a trilogy in his head. We, uh, he says, we were already talking about the second game. Uh, I mean, frankly, we were talking beyond. And these are conversations that when we're breaking the story with Lucasfilm, it's like, well, where are we going to go with the second game? I always wanted to see this as a trilogy. How can we take Cal and the crew to new places beyond what we were doing in the first game? Uh, so yeah, he has, he was uh, saying that uh, he continued stating that he had a good idea of where Survivor takes place in terms of the time, Star Wars timeline, and that the team knew what the stakes were going to be, what the tone was going to be, what Cal was going to be up against, and how his crew was going to be factored in all of that. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they're saying that the ideas they have could go beyond the second game. I, I personally would love to see this, uh, this, these games be a trilogy of games, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, we know that they're already coming out with a book as well called Je uh, Jedi uh, Battle Scars. Uh, obviously we have Jedi Fallen Order, the first game. We've got Jedi Survivor coming out on April 28th. So I'd be down for them to do another game. Uh, I think Cal's a pretty cool character and, um, yeah, depending on how this next game goes, we definitely, you know, uh, could see a third one, I think. I, mm -hmm. I'd love to, at, at least. So that sounds cool to me that they've, you know, since the beginning have had this idea of going beyond just the one game. So that's that's cool. Sure. Uh, next up... We have some Baldur's Gate oh, yes. 3 news. You yes, want to talk do. about that, Josh? Yeah, I got it here. Um, Larry has confirmed that owners of Baldur's Gate 3, the early access owners, will get the digital deluxe edition upgrade for free. Um, so, uh, 
I put this in the news because I thought that was pretty dope. Um, so here is what this article says. It's a PC game gamer article over here. It says uh, something that seems to slip the past uh, slip past a lot of people's notice when Larian announced the revised Baldur's Gate three system requirements and that it's going to have J.K. Simmons in it. it was a bit of good news for anyone who has already bought the RPG or anyone who plans to before its full release in August. You're going to get a free upgrade to the Digital Deluxe Edition on launch day, Larian said. Op uh, said Oprah Style in his blog post detailing the fancier versions of the RPG that will be available. And then on Twitter, L Larian clarified that if you already own Baldur's Gate 3 on PC or purchased it in early access before launch, you get a free upgrade to the Digital Deluxe Edition on launch day. The Digital Deluxe version will come with custom dice skin based on whether you bought it on PC or PS5, as well as the follow following, the Divinity Bard Song Pack. Astound audiences by performing this special set of new songs from the Divinity series. Um, paintings from Revelion. Discover a new collection of paintings across the Forgotten Realms. An adventurer's pouch. Receive a collection of camp supplies and potions to help get your journey started. The digital soundtrack. Enjoy the music of Baldur's Gate 3 from composer uh, Borislav Slavov. Um, the digital art book as well as digital character sheets to peruse. Peruse a set of four D&D character sheets for each Baldur's Gate 3 origin uh, character. Uh... Owners of the Digital Deluxe Edition also get the Treasures of Revelion pack, which contains four artifacts based on party members from Divinity Original Sin 2. The Mask of uh, the Shapeshifter, inspired by uh, Bucket-Wearing Skeleton Fane, lets you change your appearance. The Cape of the Red Prince, inspired by the Red Prince, of course, is a magical cloak. Uh, cloak. The Lute of Merryweather Bard, inspired by Tormented uh, Musician Los, is a, is a playable instrument. And the Needle of... The Outlaw Rogue, inspired by the murderous elf Sibyl. It is a magical dagger. The Bicorn of the Sea, uh, sea Beast, inspired by the Nautical Dwarf Beast. It is a hat. So, if you're like me, and you got on that train early, and bought Baldur's Gate 3 already, haha, -ha, We get free upgrades for being awesome like that. So Yeah, it's um, a great success. There you go. So, awesome. That's what you call a nat 20 uh commerce roll right there all right dt what is next next up we got the final piece of gaming news here for this week and that is going to be that city skylines 2 has been announced and we have an announcement trailer uh to go with it uh um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh give that a go and, and, and check it out so uh yeah in three two one go it's time to start from the beginning yet evolve into something new. A bridge. Can round roundabout. Roundabout. The story. My county's obsessed with the roundabouts. Envision they got rid of stop signs everywhere and just put roundabouts. <laughs> There you go, look at that, making the city prettier and prettier, little by bit. Your chance to shape the future. To create and inspire. Expand way up high and bring life to your creations. New worlds to explore and pursue. I 
I'll say it, all these camera movements make me feel dizzy. Here, you are the visionary. You are the creator. You make cities. It is City Skylines 2 coming this year. Wish list now. Oh, I played the first one a little bit, I think. Uh, way back in the day. How old is the first? When did the first one come out? That is a good up. question. I'm going to look this up. I never played this game, but I remember watching people play it. And it's like, to me, it's one of those games that, like, I wouldn't necessarily want to play it myself, but I definitely, uh, like, could enjoy watching somebody who knows how to play it good, you know? So it came out in 2015. So, oh, okay. so it's been a it's, while. It's been a while. It's been yeah. a while. Well, that's cool. So, it's, uh, that's you know, cool. over, it's, it's, it's overdue then. It's about time for them to make yeah. another one. It makes sense. Sequel time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sequel time. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, now, now we're just missing the XCOM 3, right? And then all will be right in the way. Oh, God. Because that one, that one came out in 2016, right? So, you know, to, to, write, to write about that same time, man. Where, where's, where's the third one? The day that's announced, I will lose my fucking mind. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that'll do it for our gaming news today, my friends. This week. That's it for the gaming news, gang. We're going to move right along into the television news. Let's hit it. Let's do it. First thing we have here for the TV news is an official teaser. For the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel season five, um, I'm I up. really love the show. Oh yeah! Jo oh, you're caught up too now. Nice. So Josh yeah. is caught up. We're both caught up. This is a teaser for the next season, which I believe oh, is the last season. Sorry, guys. I hit the air horn. I'm like, what happened, dude? <laughs> no, listen, Josh is just excited about the, the new trailer. Okay. That's yeah, all. it's true. That's all it is. All right. <laughs> Whoops. So uh let's uh let's check it out. Uh when you're ready, Josh. And, I'm ready. Uh three, two, one, go. So yeah, quick little, little little teaser. Not showing anything super spoilery or anything like that, but you know, just letting everybody know that season five is coming, and that's actually coming really soon. It it, it premieres on April fourteenth, so that's yeah. about a month away. I'm excited. I like that show, man. It's real, it's real, it's real good. I do too. I I, would, I got all caught up last year. You know, as I was working on Dice, I'd have Mrs. Maisel on. Um, oh yeah. And was watching and got, finally got caught up. So I, I enjoy that show a lot too. Uh, yeah, it's good. I can't wait for it to. It gets to end on its own terms, kind of like how Cobra Kai is going to get to end on its own terms. So yeah, we'll get we satisfying conclusions, hopefully. Uh, we, we love we love when uh, when good shows get to end the way they want to, man. Mm hmm. All right. We have. Some casting news for the Penguin series over uh, at HBO Max. They have casted Clancy Brown. And he will be playing the character of Salvatore Moroni, who is a notorious Gotham City crime boss. Uh, he, he was referenced in the movie The Batman as his arrest by the corrupt Gotham officials and the collapse of his criminal empire allowed for Carmine Falcone's organization to rise. Uh, Maroney has been previously played by other actors in, in other movies and TV shows like Eric Roberts in The Dark Knight. Um, 
And we all know that Clancy Brown is no stranger to the DC universe. He he voiced Lex Luthor and a lot of the old anim older animated stuff. So, you know, we love Clancy Brown, man. So uh, we do. We, we love to see him uh, in 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 stuff. And I think the I think he's gonna be I think he's gonna be really good as uh, mm-hmm. uh you know as this. So be good. Put him in everything. I love Clancy Brown, Mr. Krabs, fucking the Kurgan, fucking yeah, dude, everything. Would you like to know more? Fucking Star Wars. Uh, yes, sir. So yeah, I think that's that's pretty pretty dope casting news. Um, yes, sir. And then the last piece of news we have for the TV show stuff is, um. We got some more Zoro news. So you guys know that a while, like, it's been a while. It's been a while that we talked about this, but they're doing a Zoro series over at Disney Plus with Wilmer Valderrama, and Game of Thrones. All um, Brian Cogman is going to be serving as writer, showrunner, and executive producer on the series. Uh, it was originally uh, reported as being in development in December of 2021. And uh, the official logline states, when tragedy strikes his family, privileged caballero Diego de la Vega returns to his hometown of El Pueblo de Los Angeles and discovers a culture of corruption and injustice that will lead him to take on the mantle of the mass vigilante, Zorro, America's first true superhero. So, yeah, Cogman, Brian Cogman is uh, known for Game of Thrones. Uh... I believe he did some of the better Game of Thrones for those of you wondering or you know worried or, or curious. Um but uh I know he also was a consulting producer on season 1 of the Lord, uh, Lord of the Rings the Rings of Power. Um but uh but yeah. I haven't heard anything about the show in a while and all of a sudden they're like, "All right, Brian Cogman from Game of Thrones is going to be I still don't know what to think of the show in general, but uh, we'll see. I don't know. Okay. But if you got nothing to add on to that, Josh, we are done with the TV news. I don't believe there's anything else out there, so we can move right along to our movie news. Let me swap over. We got a few things here in the movie news. We got some... uh, Casting news, we got some trailers, we got some some announcements. Let's get to it then, shall we? All right, let's do it. So the first thing we have here is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has cast uh, Karan Sony as uh, uh, Spider-Man India. So you guys may recognize him as, uh, I think he's the taxi driver in the Deadpool movies. And... Uh, he will be playing Spider-Man India in the uh, new movie. In Across the Spider-Verse. Where he will, ob- where, where, you know, Miles and Gwen will obviously team up with all these many different versions of, uh, you know, Spider-Man and Spider-Women and Spider-People. But uh, Spider-Man India was first introduced in Marvel Comics in 2004. Uh... Beginning to fight crime after getting his spidey powers from an agent, uh, uh, the character story arc mirrors that of Peter Parker in most respects. Um, yeah, the character uh, Pavtir Prabhakar. Apologies if I mispronounced that, but that is uh, pretty cool. There's going to be a lot of cool spider people in this next movie, so uh, yeah. We have also a trailer for uh, Disney's Haunted Mansion, which I have not seen. This will be my first time checking this out. So we'll see what uh, this movie is about. I haven't seen it, but people were, were, were had some things to say about it, uh, which I'll, I'm will i sure we'll talk about here after we check it out. So let's, let's give it a quick, uh, quick view here. Three, two, 
One, go. Welcome home. I know this place isn't as warm as I'd hoped. But I'm going to light a vanilla candle, and it's going to be a game changer. Will it, though? <laughs> I said, will it, though? Oh, hell no. This man, also, Rosario Dawson, yeah. She needs all the help she can get. You Danny DeVito. Oh, Wilson. Yes. $2,000. What's the address? Put the key. Fucking Roy Orbison. Guys, a little help. I know I just saw that. This house has a way of playing tricks on you. Is anybody else seeing this? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Be careful. Death lurks around every corner. Other more powerful entities may come through. Not on our watch. Well, what are you gonna do? Seriously. Yeah. They're already dead. Yeah. They're gonna be deader. Okay. They're gonna be deader. <laughs> That doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to, to be honest. I was just going to say, I was like, that doesn't look too bad. That, Which is that like kind of the consensus fun. of what I heard, too. Like, people were saying that it was, it was not as bad as, you know, as, you know, maybe we thought we were going to. Uh, so that's a, that's that's good. The cast yeah. seems pretty uh, pretty cool. I, I know this wasn't going to happen, but in my head, I was just thinking, man, I'm waiting for Danny DeVito to be like, anyway, I just started blasting or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh That'd have been funny, man. But uh, no, yeah, honestly, not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, I know they came out with a Haunted Mansion movie like twenty years ago or something, mm -hmm. with like Eddie Murphy and stuff. I don't know if I ever really watched that one, but that one didn't look too good. So, uh, hopefully, I mean, at least this one looks like it's a you know, could be decent. Like it has potential. So maybe they actually made a fun movie this time. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, first time watching it, so not bad. Yeah. Uh, moving on, we have some uh, Detective Pikachu news. Uh, Jonathan uh, Crisell or Creasel is in talks to direct uh, the sequel for Detective Pikachu over at Legendary Pictures. Um, so yeah, he is in talks to dire to direct the uh live action sequel based on the globally popular uh Pokemon franchise. Uh Chris Galetta will write the script for the follow up to 2019's box office hit. Uh the original movie was directed by Rob Letterman and starred Ryan Reynolds, Ken Watanabe, Justice Smith and Catherine Newton. Uh and it was released by Warner Brothers on May 10th, 2019. Grossed more than 430 million dollars at the worldwide box office. Uh, while no deals are done at this time, nothing is confirmed. Uh, it is believed that Ryan Reynolds will place will have some part to play in the upcoming sequel. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I I'm not like. For me, I really enjoyed that first Detective Pikachu movie, and I'm not even like the biggest Pokemon fan. Like I like I grew up with it, you know, when I was a, when I was younger and stuff. So I you know I like more of the original Pokemon stuff. So. I did enjoy this Detective Pikachu movie, but um, yeah, uh, I like the first movie. So if they can make it like that, I would, I would love to, uh, love to watch this, the sequel. Cause uh, yeah, yeah, I need to watch it again. I mean, I. I remember watching that first one, but I think, I don't know. I wasn't really focused on it. I think there were some things happening, so I need to watch it again. I remember gotcha. liking I was gonna it ask at the time. Athena, because, yeah, it was, it was fun, man. I, I did like it. It's, one, it's honestly one of my, like, more favorite video game adaptations, like, movie or TV show. It's just pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of video game adaptations, 
there is a Dead by Daylight uh, horror movie coming from Blumhouse, Atomic Monster, and Behavior Interactive. Uh, so, yeah, Dead by Daylight uh, movie is in uh, development. And uh, we couldn't be more thrilled to work with Jason Blum and James Wan, two giants of the horror film industry, to further expand the Dead by Daylight universe, said Stephen Mulrooney. Executive Vice President and at Behavior Interactive. At Behavior, our motto is to create unique moments together forever. Atomic Monster and Blumhouse are the ideal partners to craft Dead by Daylight's killer entrance onto the big screen. Uh, Atomic Monster founder and CEO James Wan added, In Dead by Daylight, the Behavior team has created a love letter to the world of horror, building an incredible environment teeming with atmosphere and terrifying villains, perfect for the scary cinematic adaptation. We're big fans of the game at the Atomic Monster, and we are thrilled to be teaming with Blumhouse to bring this frightening visceral world to the big screen. Uh, they're, the companies are commencing their search for a director and screenwriter for the project. Um, the uh, James Wan and uh, and uh, and Blum are natural fits for Dead by Daylight. It says uh, they have a the, the game features a vast universe of original gruesome killers such as the Nurse, the Wraith, the Hag, and more. And they also have you know uh, classic iconic uh, licensed uh, you know killers from like you know like Pinhead and and uh, Freddy Krueger and and Michael Myers and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's a. Yet the latest video game adaptation that will be that will be happening. I could actually see this movie being pretty good, depending on uh, you know, how they go about it. Because obviously, you're not gonna make a movie where people are running around fixing generators. You know, you're gonna you're gonna lean into like the lore of, you know, the 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 backstory of the killers and stuff that they have, right? So, I could uh, I could definitely see that. You know, being pretty good depending on how they how they do it. But um, yeah, and this is and this this is, I'm saying this is somebody who doesn't even like like Dead by Daylight like that. You know, like that. But I could still see this being pretty good depending on how they do it. What do you? Any thoughts, Josh? Or no? Not really. I'm not a Dead by Daylight guy. Don't know a whole lot about it. Never really played the game. I just have a lot of friends obsessed with it. So <laughs> I'm sure they're excited and happy. Yeah. All right. In other casting news, we have Aaron Taylor Johnson joining Robert Eggers' Nosferatu uh, feature film. So Aaron Taylor Johnson is joining Bill Skarsgård, Nicholas Holt, Lily Rose Depp, Emma Corrin, and Willem Dafoe. In focus features Nosferatu, written and directed by Robert Eggers, who most recently did The Northman. Uh... Production has begun in Prague on the film, in which Skarsgård is set to play the titular vampire character in the reboot of the 1922 classic horror pick by German director F.W. Murnau. Uh, Eggers' Nosferatu will retell the gothic tale of obsession between a haunted young woman in the 19th century Germany and the ancient Transylvania vampire who stalks her, bringing untold horror with him. Uh, Jeff Robinov, who originally developed Eggers' remake at his Studio 8 banner, will produce alongside John Graham, Eggers, Chris Columbus, and Eleanor Columbus. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson is currently uh, in post-production as the titular character in Craven the Hunter and is also filming David Leitch's The, the Fall Guy. So... I feel like this could be good. I like, uh, I think I, I like the Northman. That was a good movie. And from what I want to try to remember what other movies, um, Robert Eggers has done. Cause he's done a few other ones. Sorry. I had to, I had to sneeze there, but, um, so yeah, he's, uh, the Northman and the Lighthouse. That's the other one I was trying to remember. The Lighthouse. That's the one that I that I had seen of his that I uh, that I thought was pretty decent too. I haven't seen The Witch yet though. That one I need to check out. But um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna be keeping uh, or I'm definitely gonna be having Nosferatu on my radar. 
Um, Same. Because I like his stuff, so we'll definitely uh, yeah. We'll see, we'll see who comes of that. And uh, yeah, it's since Eric Taylor Johnson is joining the cast, I think you know they already have a pretty solid cast. So you just you're, you're building onto that, so that that's good. Uh, another casting news: Fede Alvarez's Alien movie has added like four more people onto the cast. So we have David. Uh, Johnson, Archie Renault, Spike Fern, and Eileen Wu have joined Kaylee Spaney in the 20th Century uh, Studios' latest installment of the science fiction horror franchise. Alvarez, who is known for his tense and sometimes splatter filled flicks such as Don't Breathe and the Remake of Evil Dead, is directing the project that begins production in Budapest on March 9th. He also wrote the script with frequent collaborator Rodo Sayagues. Plot details are being kept in the crypto chamber, but uh, but as opposed to other movies which focus on adults in their corporate, militaristic, and scientific roles, this now ninth installment of the franchise will focus on a group of young people. On a distant colony, the group finds themselves in a fight for their lives with the titular alien, a creature known as a xenomorph, whose race propagates by implanting eggs into people's stomachs via haste face huggers, which if you've seen the movies, you already know that. But, uh... Yes, uh, I think we previously talked about that Kaylee Spaney was going to be playing the the lead character. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see, man. The Alien movies have unfortunately not been the best as of late. Although that being said, I was a fan of Prometheus. I did like Prometheus, but the one that came after that, which is uh, I believe Covenant, Alien Covenant, I wasn't a big fan of. I thought there was a lot of stupid stupidity in that one but uh you know we'll see what happens in this, in this next one i don't know uh and to end off our movie news here we got two two things to talk about for uh uh the teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem movie first of all we got the cast which will be consisting of micah abbey who will be playing donatello uh, Shaman Brown Jr., who's Michelangelo, Nicholas Cantu, who's playing Leonardo, Brady Noon as Raphael, and Jackie Chan voicing the wise rat mentor Splinter. Seth Rogen will be playing uh, Bebop, and John Cena will be playing Bebop's pal Rocksteady. Uh, other people involved will be Hannibal Burris as a Genghis Frog, Rose Byrne as Leatherhead, Ice Cube as Superfly. Natasia Dimitro as uh, Wingnut, Ayo Adibiri as April O'Neil, Giancarlo Esposito as Baxter Stockman, Post Malone as Ray Fillet, Paul Rudd as Mundo Gecko, and Maya Rudolph as Cynthia Utram. Um, so let's check out the trailer. They released this one, I think it was today. Yeah, it was today. That yeah. they so let's check it out. I haven't seen this yet. Same. Um, so we're about to watch this live. This is going to be a live reaction that you're going to be getting from us. True. So, uh, if you're ready, Josh, I'm ready. We're going to press play in three, two, one, go. Trailer before the trailer. Oh, no, me too. But. I can say I I already like the animation style because it's very Spider Verse like. Yeah, it really is. There's been a few movies now since Spider Verse have come out that I have this kind of animation style, and I actually honestly really like it. Let's try that again, but with Ninja Stars. <gasps> hey, why do we pick a fruit shaped exactly like my head? Just stop talking, you're ruining my concentration. You're fine, chill. He's gonna die. Yeah. Ah. Did you hear that? What was that? Well, not that we can do. You guys wanna grab pizza? Can I kick it? Can I kick it? Can I kick it? Can I kick it? What the heck are those things? They look like little Shreks to me. Little Shreks, bro. 
Oh, we've prepared our whole lives for this. Leo, what happened? Is Donnie bleeding? Mikey, watch out! So, you were baby turtles who made contact with mystery goo. Well, we prefer the term ooze, but yeah. It's like more like, it's just nicer. It, it, it rolls off the tongue better, yeah. Ooze. ooze. It's nice, right? Ooze. It's ooze. The secret of the ooze. All right, so... Based off of this trailer, I have to I gotta say that I like the animation style. Um I don't think I like the turtles being like little kids, but that's that yeah. might just be me. Uh, no, that's no, I game. agree with you. I agree with you. I was also a little I don't know if I like, I'm like this. I'm like, eh, they look they're like they're they they're very young. The voices are very young, they they sound like kids. Um but there, I mean, there isn't really much else to go on. I mean, other than like, I like I said, I really love the animation style. It's very Spider Verse like, which other movies have done recently. Like the the new Puss in Boots movie did that too, and I really liked it. That, um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of, eh, I don't know. I'm I'm not like, I'll, I'll check it out, but I can't say I'm like excited or anything. It just you know, the coolest thing is definitely the the, the style that they're going for. But uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks all right. All right. That'll uh, that'll do it for our movie news, my friend, and everybody out there listening and watching. That is it. That's it for the movie news, guys. I need a quick break. Um, not it's not gonna be long, but I need a quick one. Um. Uh, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. We'll do our bracket. You guys get to find out what it is. I'll put some music on in the meantime. I get we'll to right find back. out what it is because I don't know. Yeah. yeah We're we, we, we going to find out here. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back for the second half of the show. It will be bracket unveiling time here Dang. on the show the bracket has not been mixed up yet or shuffled yet but we will do that in just a moment because i didn't want time to think about it i wouldn't do it just the same as you guys so let's get into it uh so previously we'd done brackets of um let me open up my folder here of all the clockwork i keep all the notes for the clockwork stuff that we've done in the past so i have our movie lists i got you know our video game romance lists uh uh notes for like when we did the secret invasion comics all that stuff right so i have mm -hmm. our previous uh brackets here we've done uh, a star wars yeah. character bracket in the past yes that one was fun uh we did a uh -huh. comic book villain bracket i believe uh mm -hmm. was like last comic time book villain bracket yeah yeah. Well, this time it is kind of it's not something we've done before. It is like a, a topic we've done before, kind of. Uh, we did the movies. We did a movie list of these things. But this time yes. we're going to do a favorite character list of our favorite Pixar movies. So some of our favorite characters oh. from Pixar movies. OK, which, because this is, this we, is, we listed, uh, this is interesting. Yeah, right. Right, we did all of our. We did a movie list a while back with like our favorite Pixar movies, right? So I thought, yes. well, we did the movies, and we don't do really do rankings anymore. It's very rarely that we do rankings, but what we do do is brackets, because brackets I like even more than doing like the ranking, to be honest. So, um, and so that's what we're gonna do here. I have this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, I wonder which characters you have on here, because like I said. I don't. I didn't know what this was gonna be. This is Josh. This is all Josh is doing. We're we're gonna find out here. I, I don't even yeah. think he's randomized it yet. I have not randomized it. They just they are in the list as I kind of thought of them. And I tried to get like two, at least two from just about every movie out there. Some of them have a little bit more. Some of them have a little bit less. So we and, have thirty two. Well, thirty two. We have yeah. thirty two characters. Uh, and the list goes like this. I'm going to throw it up on the screen for you guys. So you can see. We have... Woody from Toy Story. 
Linguini from Ratatouille. Uh, Ian Lightfoot from Onward. Mama Coco from Coco. Uh, Lightning McQueen from Cars. King Fergus from Brave. Wow. Yeah. Joy from Inside Out. Syndrome from The Incredibles. Bing Bong, also from Inside Out. Boo from Monsters, Inc. Flick from A Bug's Life. Eve from Wall-E. Uh, Carl Fredrick, Fredrickson from Up. 22 from Soul. Uh, Nemo from Finding Nemo. Sully from Monsters, Inc. Mike Wazowski, also from Monsters, Inc. Frozone from The Incredibles. Uh, Joe Gardner from Soul. Russell from Up. Wally from Wally. Uh, Heimlich from A Bug's Life. Jesse from Toy Story. Marlin from Finding Nemo. Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles. Sadness from Inside Out. Merida from Brave. Uh, Mater from Cars. Um, Miguel Ooh, from Coco. Cook. Uh, exactly. Uh, Barley Lightfoot from Onward. Remy from Ratatouille. And Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. So those nice. are are the participants of this here okay. um I like the bracket most uh, we got we got representation from all the movies you know yeah that's good so i i was trying to figure out which bracket i wanted to do it for a long time i was like i have and i have several ideas for brackets all right but this right. is just the one that i was like well we haven't done a pixar thing in a minute we both like pixar we like animated things let's True. do a favorite character from pixar bracket so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle these participants up. We're going to shuffle the seeds here. I'm going to hit it a bunch. Uh, like a lot. I'm going to hit it like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. And then I'm going to yep. download it, this, and I'm going to give DT a copy. And I'm going to put the copy in the Discord for using the guys that wants to follow at home. So let me, I'm going to swap back to this screen so I can download it. Um. Let's see. Do I want this as... What is this version? Is this version fillable? It's not. Okay. We'll just make a PNG for you guys, an HD. Download that. <laughs> we'll throw it in blasters and bandits just because I have that up as the default at the moment. And I'm going to send the copy to DT. Up. Here it comes, DT. There it is. All righty then. We're going yeah, to throw this some of my gun out. And if you're following the podcast and you want to follow along at home, it's going to be in the Clockwork Cantina channel in DT's the uh, Discord server. Majin, I know you wanted it. I'm going to tag you just to get you here quicker. All right, it is there. Let's, let's, uh, let's do this then. All right, I'm going to hit start tournament. All right, let's look this over here for our first round, shall we? So first round matchups. Yep, here we go. Oh, man. Uh, in the first, we're going to go top to bottom. That's how I'm doing rounds. I'm not going to oh, be like, dude. Oh, bro. Dude. Yeah, no, right? All, all, off the bat, you put them, you pit them against each other? Man, that's the way oh, cookie crumbles, I brother. guess. So. Damn. First up, we have Remy from Ratatouille versus Linguini from Ratatouille. <laughs> oh, DT's already dying over here. He's like, no, how could, how could you? I like, that's one of my favorite Pixar movies. And they're both, you know, it's like, damn, you gotta, you gotta put them against each other already? Yeah. Apparently. Here, um, it is what it is, get, man. Let me get getting zoomed in here for you guys. That way you can see it good. Hopefully on the, on the old stream of doodle. Um, next up, we have Sadness from Inside Out versus Jesse from Toy Story. After that, we have Wally from Wally versus Lightning McQueen from Cars. After that, we have Eve from Wally versus Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles. Next up, we have Please, uh, some of these are tough, I can tell you already. I know, yeah. Next up, we have Heimlich from Bug's Life versus Joy from Inside Out. After that, we have Mike Wazowski versus Miguel from Coco. God damn, this is going to be hard. <laughs> uh, like, too many of these are, are already stacked in the first round. Like, come on. Right? right? What the uh, fuck, bro? 
Uh, Carl Fredrickson from Up versus Joe Gardner. Uh, 22 from Soul is going to go up against Merida from Brave. Um, Syndrome from The Incredibles is going up against Ian Lightfoot from Onward. Mama Coco from Coco is going up against Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. Oh, man. Jesus. Russell from Up is going up against Mater from Cars. Sully from Monsters, Inc. is going up against Bing Bong from Inside Out. Boo is go from Monsters, Inc. is going up against Woody from Toy Story. Frozone from The Incredibles is going up against Nemo from Finding Nemo. And Marlin from Finding Nemo is going up against Flick from Bugs Life. And King Fergus from Brave is taking on Barley Lightfoot from Onward. So that's your... Your first uh, go around here. I'm going to go ahead and start making my selections. I'm going to swap over. I will as well. We're going to do round one. All right. This, is, this, this, this might take a minute, guys. All right. This might so take a minute. If you guys want to do it yourself, do it. Let us know what you think in the comments or, you know, fill it out yourself. And, uh, yeah. We're going to... Get to this. It's gonna be. It's, it's, it's gonna be something. Somebody's gonna be tough, man. Somebody's gonna be real tough. Yeah. Oh boy. Man. There's some I'm gonna skip and come back to. <laughs> You're like, I got to. I got it. Can't. I got it. I got it. Oh boy. Some of these, right? Oh, I'm gonna have to come back to that one. I'm gonna have to come back to that one. Uh... Fucking hell. Um, making picks, making choices. Oof. Uh huh. It ain't easy. It ain't easy being cheesy. But that's the fun in doing these, man. It's like you gotta make tough choices, man. No matter how, no matter how much you like one character, there's gonna be one you like a little bit more. I think. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. No matter how yep. much you, you like one, it's like well, at the end of the day, always there always is another. This one, this one. Ooh, gosh, I got to do it. Oh, no, I don't like that. I <laughs> know, uh, right? Like, oh, no. no. I'm just like, I made choices. I'm looking at the next round, and I'm like, oh, no. Why are we putting these <laughs> up against each other? God a, damn it. It's going to be hard, man. Son of a biscuit-eating <laughs> baker. Uh, it's hard. Uh, it's hard I don't one. like it. I don't, I don't like it. That's the joy of brackets, though, man. Fucking makes you think. Damn it! Really um, I still, I, I'm, I'm still working over two. I have to make two choices here. Um. Fucking hell, man! What a struggle. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see. Oh, no. No, why? Why? Yep. 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 I don't know. How am I going to pick this? This ain't... This is, <laughs> this is a bullshit matchup. That's what this is. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. All right, my next round is ready. So let me know when you are ready, friend. All right, I'm still I'm still working through mine cuz that's fair. A little, they're they're a little, quite difficult. A little tougher than the others, but uh yeah. I'm 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 trying to do here. Fucking hell.
All right. All right. How many more of these do I need? Oh, I still need a couple more. Uh, I can choose. Oh, this one. Take your time. I'm making some adjustments here. Not, I'm not changing right. my answers. I'm just putting scores in. That way, I can see how many, who wins, how many in a row, in a row, without gotcha, having to yeah. count. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh man. Oh boy. This one. Oh, this one's tough, dude. But fuck. This is gonna be an upset. I feel like I don't know. I don't know how people are gonna feel about this one for me. Uh, but you know uh, what? March Madness. There's always upsets, baby. That's how we do it around here. Uh oh, God. I feel. Oh, all right. It needs to be done. This is my <laughs> list. Damn it. This is my list. God damn it. But I also fuck. If some of these matches were differently, they would. They would go. They would. Go I upset. know. Random number generators. This is why I love brackets. I love how hard it is, you know? Yeah. yeah I love how hard it is to make a decision on these things, because you yeah. love these characters, all right? So, um. All right. I am done. So if you want to. All right. If you want to start the elimination process, we can uh, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, all right. Fuck. All right. I'm going to show mine uh, on screen. You Up top, here we go. All right, here are my selections. I'm just gonna I'm gonna read down mine, DT, and then you can read down yours, and we can kind of talk about why we went the way we did. How about that? That make it easier. Well. All right. First up, I had. Remy from Ratatouille versus Linguini from Ratatouille. I ended up going with Remy uh, here in this first round. One out. Uh, next up, I had Sadness from Inside Out. Up against Jesse from Toy Story. I went and Jesse one out here. After that, we had Wally from Wally versus Lightning McQueen from Cars. I ended up going with Wally from Wally. Mm -hmm. Next up, we had Eve from Wally versus Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles. So I ended up going with Mr. Incredible. Next up, we had Heimlich from A Bug's Life versus Joy from Inside Out. I ended up going with Joy in this case. And here's the one where I struggled with the longest. Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. versus Miguel from Coco. I ended up going with Miguel from Coco, making it to the next round. That one was a struggle, though. That was not an easy pick. <laughs> that was hard. Um, next up, I had Carl Fredrickson versus Joe Gardner from Soul. Uh, ended up going with Carl. After that, we had 22 from Soul versus Merida from Brave. Ended up going with Merida from Brave. Uh, yeah. After that, we had Syndrome from The Incredibles versus Ian Lightfoot. Ended up going with Syndrome. After that, we had Mama Coco from Coco versus Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. Ended up having to go with Buzz here. Yeah. Um, after that, we had Russell from Up versus Mater from Cars. Ended up having to go with Russell from Up. After that, we had Sully from Monsters, Inc. versus Bing Bong from Inside Out. Ended up having to go up with Sully here. After that, we had Boo from Monsters, Inc. versus Woody from Toy Story. Woody from Toy Story, one out here. After that, we had Frozone from The Incredibles. Up against Nemo from Finding Nemo. And Frozone moved on. Nemo got knocked out of his own movie in the first round. But that's the way it goes, Mr. Nemo. Um, uh, Marlin from Finding Nemo went up against Flick from A Bug's Life. We ended up going with Marlin here. And last but not least, we had King Fergus from Brave up against uh, Barley Lightfoot from Onward. Barley won out here at the at the final end. All right, that is my selection. How about there you, DT? You go. So for me, up top, my first first matchup is exactly the same. Uh, I chose Remy between Remy and Linguini, and then between Sadness and Jesse, I had to go Jesse because I'll be honest, Inside Out is not one of my favorite Pixar or Pixar movies. It's just I think it's fine. It's okay. I don't, it's not like up there for me like it is for other people. I got you. So I don't. So and I like Toy Story way more. So taste. So you know I like Jesse more as a character anyway than sadness. 
And then in between the, the, the other two, I mean, Remy and Linguini, I mean, you got the two main characters basically of the movie, you know? So, uh, you know, I feel like Remy is, you know, he's the one that, that makes stuff happen. So he's the catalyst behind everything. So he's kind of the that, exact same that. reason I, I went with. Yeah. Then for my next matchup, it was Lightning McQueen and Wally. This one, I like both of these characters, but I love Wally more. So <laughs> Wally took the pick. And then this next one was tough because for the longest time, before Coco is my favorite Pixar movie. So before that, though, it was Wally. Um, so it was a tough choosing between Eve and Mr. Incredible. And this is going to be one of the first upsets because I went with Eve over Mr. Incredible. Oh, shit. We have our first deviation, really, here. Yep. I so I went with Eve. And, 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 this is, and this is where I, I hate the next matchup because oh, I got God. Wally versus Eve. And that's yeah. going to gonna suck. Um, okay. Then we got Heimlich and Joy. I went with Heimlich because, yeah, like I said, Inside Out, not the biggest, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of that one, but. Bug in a bug's life, I haven't seen in a long time, but I remember Heimlich being a funny dude, so I went with Heimlich. Miguel and Mike Kozowski, I like Monsters Inc. I like Coco, but Coco's my favorite. I had to go with Miguel. That was an that was a, an easy one for me. And then we got Carl from Up versus Joe from Soul. I went with Carl. Uh and then 22 from Soul versus Merida from Brave. I went with Merida. Uh, yeah, I just, Soul, Soul's a good movie, but I don't know, I feel like, I don't know, I just, they, Soul lost both of their matchups in, in this one, because, I don't know, like, it's, it's one of the more, like, newer ones, so I don't have as much, like, attachment to it as I would, like, you know, Up or Brave, mm -hmm. so, you know, just, in this case, it's just the older characters winning out, you know? Okay. Uh, we have Syndrome from The Incredibles versus Ian Lightfoot from Onward. Uh, I went with Ian Lightfoot. Sorry, Syndrome. And then we have Mama Coco versus Buzz Lightyear. This is a really tough one for me because I like both of these characters. But at the end of the day, the choice was made easy for me. I went with Mama Coco, and this, and the simple reason is because fuck you, Tim Allen. That's why. <laughs> so, I, so, I, so it made me easy. So it made the choice easy for me because I, I was confused for a little bit because I was like, man, I like both of these, but you know what? Fuck you, Tim Allen. I went with Mama Coco. And then Russell from Up versus Mater from Cars. I went with Mater. Uh, Bing Bong and okay, Bing Bong and Sully was a tough one because. But let me give you guys a little bit of information on this one. You you know by now because you know by now that that uh Inside Out is not my favorite uh Pixar movie. However, I did get a little emotional with the Bing Bong part in the Inside Out movie. That is the that is like by far my favorite thing in that entire movie. So for that reason alone, I took Bing Bong over Sully. Hey. Oh man. It's tough. It was a tough. Was was tough. I like Sully, man, and I like Monsters Inc. And and you and let me and this is even and this is why this is even tougher because the next round we have Boo from Monsters Inc. versus Woody, and I chose Woody. So that means no characters from Monsters Inc. are moving on for me, and that is that kind of sucks because I do I like that movie, but these matchups, dude, they just they like they force me to go the other way, man. But I really do like that movie. But yeah, Boo and Woody had to go Woody. Frozone versus Nemo had to go. I went Nemo. So again, for, no, I like the Incredibles, <laughs> but no characters from those movies are moving on for me. Um, then we got Marlin and Flick. I took Marlin as well, like Josh. And then also between Fergus and, and Barley, I also took Barley. I don't remember the character of King Fergus that much. It's been a while since I've seen Brave. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. I went with the more recency, you know, of while well, having seen Onward. Which, I mean, I haven't seen it since it came out, but still, I've, I've seen that more recently than I have Brave, you know? Yeah. 
Um, before we move on to round two, I just want to say I don't think there's a bad movie on here. To be honest, like, like I, I there's movies I like more than others, but I think they're all yeah. pretty pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah. I just was like, as I was going down through these, I was like, you know, I like all these movies. I haven't seen a Bug's Life in a long fucking time though. Same, like, same. Like they, I think on this list, it's the one I haven't seen the longest. Um, the rest I've I've seen quite a bit. Or, or fairly recent. I haven't seen Brave since I watched it for the first time, which was a little bit ago. So, all right. So for round two, I'm going to talk about the matchups I have for the next round. I have yep. first up, we have Remy versus Jesse. I can show this on stream for you guys. Uh, I have Remy from Ratatouille versus Jesse from Toy Story. Wally versus Mr. Incredible. Joy from Inside Out versus Miguel uh, from Coco. Uh, Carl from Up versus Merida from Brave. Um, Syndrome uh, versus Buzz Lightyear. Uh, next up, I have Russell from Up versus Sully from Monsters, Inc. Then I have Woody from uh, Toy Story and Frozone from The Incredibles. Then I have Marlin from Finding Nemo versus Barley Lightfoot from Onward. Who do you got, DT? What are your matchups, if you don't mind? Reading my my round two matchups are Remy versus Jesse, Wally versus Eve, Heimlich versus Miguel, Carl versus Merida, Ian versus Mama Coco, Mater versus Bing Bong, Woody versus Nemo, and Marlin versus Barley. So those are my round two matchups, and. Yeah, I'm ready to I'm ready All to right. get started on these, Josh, if you are. Let's do it. We're going to do start doing our round twos, guys. So make your decisions. Make your picks. Go. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> you already running into some trouble there. I'm I'm having a thing, you know, mm. like yeah. Oh man, some of these next matchups for me are gonna be. Nuts. Ugh. I'm co- I'm coming back to that one. I'm coming back to that one. I'm skipping it for now. Get it, man. I get it. Some of these are a little bit tougher than others, for sure. All right, my I got my picks in. So whenever you're ready, I'm ready. I got. I got to figure out this last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Tough, man. This one's real fucking tough. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I, I am ready. I'm ready. Right. God damn it. Why is it going to be so hard, man? Oh, Jesus. Because that's how it be, man. That's how bracket time. You gotta... It's so hard. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, round two, DT. You can go first this time. I'll let you go first. What, who, uh, right. what, what are so your matchups? So my matchups are, like I said, Remy versus Jesse, Wally versus Eve, Heimlich versus Miguel, Carl versus Merida, Ian versus Mama Coco, Mater versus Bing Bong, Woody versus Nemo, and Marlin versus Barley. So let's go ahead and get them started. So matchup number one, Remy and Jesse. Remy from Ratatouille, Jesse from Toy Story. I went with Remy the Rat. Uh, yeah, Jesse. Jesse's cool. But she's not she's not a major character, man. She she does you know, she's she's there, but like I don't know. Remy is like the main character of his movie, so he's got more of an impact. And uh even though he's a fucking rat, you know, he's still still doing things. So I had to go with Remy the rat. Then Wally versus Eve, this is tough too, man, because you, you how how fucked up it is that we pit these two up against each other, but right. I, I, you know, had to go with Wally, dude. You know, had to go with Wally on that one, unfortunately. Sorry, Eve, but I had to go with Wally. 
It might have happened eventually anyway, but, you know, I guess it's better to get it out of the way sooner rather than later. Uh, Heimlich versus Miguel. Uh, I went with Miguel, obviously. That was, a, that was an easy choice for me. Carl versus Merida. I went with Merida. Sorry, old man Carl, but your time is up. <laughs> uh, Merida is moving on. Uh, Ian from uh, Onward versus Mama Coco. I went with Mama Coco. Mater versus Bing Bong. I went with Bing Bong. Uh, then we got Woody and Nemo. I went with Woody. Got to keep the Toy Story gang alive here with, with Woody. And then between Marlon and Barley, I went with uh, Barley. So that is uh, All right. those are my picks for uh you know for that. All right. Next up is my picks. So here are my picks. I had Remy from Ratatouille versus Jesse from Toy Story. I went with Remy. Kind of the same uh uh uh, same reason DT said, like, Jesse isn't, like, a major character, and Remy is, so he kind of carries that mo- movie a little bit more, so he's moving on. Uh, between Wally and Mr. Incredible, I just, I like Wally more. Wally is adorable. If he was a pet, I would have him all the time, okay? He's a baby. <laughs> I would take care of Wally. Um, yeah. Next up, I had Joy from Inside Out versus Miguel from Coco. I had to go with Miguel here. I love Coco. And I'm a white dude. I totally understand it. If you if you <laughs> if if you're not if you like Coco so much, even if you're not a white dude, like like you know what I mean. Like if it is uh, appropriate to your culture, is what I'm getting at. I understand the love for Coco. I love Coco. Coco is so good. It's one of my favorites. Um. Uh. Next up, I had Carl from Up versus Merida, and I ended up going with Merida here. The old man made it far, but not. Not far enough, apparently. Um, next up, I had Syndrome versus Buzz. I just like Syndrome more, man. He is a... Uh, uh, like, Buzz ends up, t- I feel like, taking a backseat in, in later Toy Story movies, whereas Syndrome is like a force throughout The Incredibles. And not only that, he's not a super-powered human in The Incredibles universe. This is a, this is a dude that has... Uh, he, he, you're gonna laugh when I say this. He's like John Wick. He's a man of sheer fucking will. That becomes an inventor to become a a, a a villain, but wanted to be a hero, right? So that's kind of why I ended up moving him on. Next up, I had Russell versus Sully from Monsters, Inc. I ended up going with Sully from Monsters, Inc. So Monsters, Inc. still in the fight a little bit on, on my uh, bracket. Um, next up, I had Woody from Toy Story versus Frozone from The Incredibles. Ended up having to go with Woody here. Um, he is the main character through that franchise, pretty much, so... Woody moves on and Frozone. I love you, Samuel L. Jackson, but you, you know, <laughs> Tom Hanks, man. Um, and then um, Marlon from Finding Nemo versus uh, Barley Lightfoot. Marlon, you, you're a fish out of water, my friend. Barley moves on. Uh, so for the next round, I have Remy from Ratatouille versus Wally from Wally. Oh, that's gonna be a hard fucking pick. Uh, <laughs> The same with uh, Miguel from Coco and Mer- versus Merida from Brave. Oh no, it's gonna be a hard pick. Yeah. And then Syndrome uh, versus Sully from Monsters Inc. Oh. And then we have Woody <laughs> versus Barley. No. Oh God. <laughs> D- DT, what you got? What are your matchups? Choices, choices must be made. My matchups are Remy versus Wally, Miguel versus Merida, Mama Coco versus Bing Bong, and Woody versus Barley. Oh man! Time to get get going, man. <laughs> Every round is gonna take longer because I have to sit here and think, think this out. <laughs> I'm a, I'm already I'm already started, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sitting here looking. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Damn! Fucking gotta a! Do you gotta do. Man. Right, I'm gonna skip that one for now. Uh, come on. Killing me here. You're <laughs> killing me, Larry. Oh. Oh, my God. 
This is so hard, dude. This is so hard. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Mm. Alright, minor, minor, minor set. I got my choices. Mm. Listen to me, DT. When I say this, you can have ties, right? We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna move into everybody's is tied right now. I'm kidding. Uh, fuck, fuck the the matchups. It's not fair, man. So it's, it's not fair. Okay. Okay, I, I, I have picked. I've made my decisions. Oh, that one. Honestly, that was the hardest one yet for me right there. That was oh, that was real difficult. Um, I'll go ahead and go first this go around. All right. Round three. I had. Remy, Remy from Ratatouille versus Wally from Wally. And I'm going to go with Wally here, man. I just like Wally more, man. He's just so, he's so adorable. Um. This yep. is the one I struggled on. This next one, Miguel from Coco versus Merida from Brave. I really like Brave. Mm. I didn't watch Brave till like a long time after it came out. And I like that movie a lot. Problem is, Coco is so fucking good. Like, like it really is. If you've never seen it, go watch it because it's just so fucking good. But I really struggled on this one. Because I like both with? of these so much. I ended up going with Miguel from Coco. Coco moved on. Oh, with damn. Merida. I, th I thought you were going to go with Merida. I'm not going to lie. I, dude, it was not easy. That's why I was struggling real hard right there. <laughs> like, any other matchup on this list, Merida probably would have moved on. But she went up against Miguel from Coco. And, and Coco, it's too good. It's too good. Okay. And so... That's that's it, it was close. It was real fucking close. Uh, the next one that this one wasn't particularly close. I think Sully is the better character than Syndrome, so Sully moves on. Uh, his character in in the in Monsters Inc. rather is so good and grows so much over that over the length of that movie with Boo. So it beat out old Syndrome here. Uh, next up we have Woody from Toy Story versus Barley Lightfoot. Woody won out here. I loved Onward. I thought Onward was a fantastic movie. It, it appeals to a lot of things that I care about. But Woody, Woody has been around since I was a kid, you know. So and so he's got that nostalgia going for him. Uh, and it's Tom Hanks, and I love Tom Hanks. So that's that's ended up. That's who I ended up going with. Um, definitely not some easy picks, my friend. Definitely not some easy picks. How about you? What, 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 what about you? What, did you? what you got in this round? All right. So for me, my matchups were, if you guys remember, uh, Remy versus Wally. Uh, Miguel versus Merida. So pretty much the same as Josh for those first two. Then we got Mama Coco versus Bing Bong. And to end it, we have uh, Woody versus Barley. So. I went with in in the uh, in the case of uh, Wally versus Remy. I went with Wally because I like Wally more as a character. Uh, Miguel versus Merida. This one was 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 a tough one, but I went with uh, I went with uh, um, uh, uh, Miguel. Jesus, I went with Miguel. Mama Coco versus Bing Bong. I went with Mama Coco. Both two very big emotional characters for me, but Mama Coco was just so much, you know, so much more um, about okay. the entire movie. Whereas Bing Bong for me, I feel like it's just that one moment in the movie. Um, so yeah, and then my final matchup, Woody versus Barley. Like, I'm, listen, listen, I'm sorry, Barley, but Woody, Woody, Woody's got you beat ten times out of ten, brother. Uh, that's just that's just the, that's just the truth right there. So yeah, my next round matchups are. Oh, I say next round, but we're like, this is like pretty much the end before the finale. So we got Wally for me, Wally versus Miguel, and Mama Coco versus Woody. So this is it, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, I Down. have uh, yeah. my next round. I have Wally versus Miguel, same as DT. But then I have Sully versus Woody from Toy Story. So let's get into it, man. Let's let's figure out our our, our, yeah. our finale here. Oh God. Oh. do it oh the pain i i got mine i'm locked in josh i'm set i am too my friend you go first you're up first who you got in the grand finale for the 2023 clockwork cantina march madness bracket or Pixar bracket rather. Uh I have Wally over Miguel and Woody over Mama Coco. The reasoning is I like Coco's my favorite movie and everything. But I just Wally I've I've loved for years, man. Like he's just he's the cool little robot dude that's been around since two thousand eight. And Woody, Woody just has more movies under his belt. Uh, and he has some pretty strong emotional beats throughout those movies. Mama Coco is like one whole ass movie. And it is the damn good movie where it's emotional. But man, Woody has some pretty solid emotional beats as well. And uh, yeah, if you've seen all the Toy Story movies, especially the last one, I feel like Toy Story 4 has some pretty, it's a, it's a pretty emotional Woody movie. Uh, yeah, I just, it was a tough, tough choice. I could have gone either way, to be honest with you, on Mama Coco or Woody, but I I think, I think Woody just with the test of time and the longevity and just, you know, the more amount of screen time takes the edge over Mama Coco. And then, yeah, Wally over Miguel, because I just, I don't know, Wally, I just, I've always loved Wally, dude. I just, I, Wally's has always been my favorite. Uh. You know, um, you know, one of my favorite characters. So, yeah. I got news for you, DT. What's we that? got the same matchup at the final round. At the final Woody uh, versus Wally. <laughs> yeah, we got we do. I ended up going with Wally over Miguel from Coco, and ended up going with Woody over Sully from Monsters Inc. Man, it's it's just the way it kind of worked out here. So we have way the cookie crumbles, man. We, uh, we had different different options throughout, but. The end is the same. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of funny that we got here. Uh, at the same place with different characters in some of yeah. those matchups. So let's go ahead and I don't even think we need to spend any time on it. We need to crown figure out champion? our final one. Yeah, let's crown our champs. I, I have mine already, dude. So uh, I, I, have I have mine as well. All right. All right. Well, I'll reveal to you guys then. I ha- I went with Wally from Wally is my champion here. DT, I, my got? champion is also Wally. He's one of my favorite. He's like my favorite my favorite Pixar character. So you know, same. I uh, I had to go Wally, dude. I just I just I, I it's Wally, man. Like Pixar's got a lot of good characters, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, my boy my boy Wally is. Uh, I think know, it um where it, speaks where volumes at. about that character. Yeah. Because he doesn't really talk. He he talk. He beeps, but he doesn't really talk. Yeah, he you doesn't know, talk, like yeah. And yet, but, <laughs> still, we're, still, we're here, right? I think that says a lot about that character in that movie. Um, for Wally, like it left an impression on on both of us uh, that we really just love that character, and he's the king. He's the champ um, of yeah. our. March Madness Pixar character bracket for 2023. Um, there were some hard decisions in there, and things may have shaken up differently if certain characters were marched, matched against others. Who knows? You know, but that is the joy that I I love brackets. Um, um, I like them more. You know how people do tier lists with like S's and A's and B's and C's? Yeah. Bro, that shit's easy. Do a fucking bracket. That shit's hard, okay? Like, y'all <laughs> soft doing that shit. You know what's not soft? Doing brackets. Brackets are hard. <laughs> All right? So stop being soft. Do brackets, you cowards. Um, 
but man, there, there were some tough decisions in here. Okay, so real tough decisions um, yeah. for these characters, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I struggled with some things, and some things was easy, but it's a lot of fun yeah. doing brackets. Indeed, yeah, it was, it was a blast. I I wasn't sure what the hell we we're gonna do at the start of this, but uh, yeah. Here it is, man. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was quite something. I, I I had a blast. I had a blast doing it, man. It was, these are always fun. I always enjoy doing them. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to the next one because, yeah, dude. These are, there's so much fun to, like, fucking just struggle over, you know? It's like, oh, God, I don't want to make this choice. But you got to. You fucking got to, man. Facts. Uh. What fun! What a struggle, but what fun! Um, yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right, guys. I guess that's gonna do it. Post your brackets if you have them in the Clockwork Cantina channel on DT's server. I'll post mine in there. I'm sure DT will post his in there. Uh, we I already, I already them. Yeah. I already got mine in there. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, I got a Photoshop Wally onto mine, so uh, like our like uh, that, and then I will post mine in there. Um. So yeah, let us let us see your brackets, guys. Would appreciate that. Other than yeah, that, wanna, I think that's gonna be the show. show. I was gonna say if you want to show them my bracket real quick, cause uh, yeah, let me open it. They they didn't get to see mine. You can see kind of how I was making my my picks along there with it. Let me open it here for you guys. Put it over here. Hold up, I'm still stuck on this. Where did it go? I closed it. Let me open it again. There it is. Okay, let me show that on screen here for you guys. Boom. There's my bracket. There it is. I was uh, I always do these in Photoshop so I can just kind of do stuff quickly like that, you know. So yeah, it's because our stupid bracket yeah. making thing that makes it harder to share too. So I just did it that way. Yeah, that's those are those are my picks. Like I said, if you if you guys were you know we've been saying if you guys are gonna, gonna do your own, definitely uh you know. Show us your your own bracket, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. You know, let us know what yeah. you guys would do, how your guys' bracket would go. But uh, yeah, I think that'll I think that'll do it, right? That's gonna do it for the show, guys. Thank you for joining us. I know it was a little bit of a later show. I think that worked out for some folks though. Uh, that that got to attend that maybe not usually get to. Of course, on YouTube, it'll be the the usual time out there for you guys. Um. Thank you to DT for always being an awesome co-host, and I'm so glad we made brackets a thing for March, and it's always fun to do them. So, DT, yeah. I'm going to throw it over to you so you can say your goodbyes, my friend. You are on the main screen. Shout out to March Madness. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, watching, listening, hanging out, doing your own bracket if you did. Um, look forward to next week's episode where we'll be talking about The Last of Us, season, all of season one, the HBO Max show. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, we may have a guest on, I don't know, maybe we'll, I'll have to, I'll have to talk to, uh, said guest, see if they are, uh, maybe interested in joining us for that, but, um, you know, uh, that's going to do it. Uh, follow me on all the things you see here on the sidebars. I will be playing more Yakuza zero. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'll be having the videos go up on YouTube as well, but I'll be playing it live on Twitch. So if you want to see that live, come check it out. And uh, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna do it. So thank you all. Bye bye. Have a good one. Peace out. See you later. All right, guys. It is my turn to say my goodbyes. Make sure to check out all the all the all the things here on the sidebars. There, uh, I sell dice. Make sure to check out the Etsy. Um, thank you to everybody that came by the show. Thank you to everybody that's gonna do the. Uh, um brackets make sure to post them i want to see them tweet them at me post them in the discord whatever you need to do put them out there um i i loved i adored doing them and i want to see what choices you guys made you probably have completely different choices from us you might have a different winner um uh i want to get my sleep schedule fixed and then i want to try to start streaming again because i'm really behind on video games the things i need to play uh so uh, I'm going to get my sleep schedule fixed and then we're going to do some light streaming. Maybe just a few hours every day. Not a lot. Maybe two to three hours every day of just some games I need to do. So knock knock those out. 
keep an eye on all the social medias. We're available on Spotify. One of our friends. One of our friends had no idea we were available on Spotify this past, uh, like yesterday evening, or, or I think it was we were talking about it, or the day before. I can't remember. My days run together because my sleep schedule's boned. Um, didn't realize we were on we we're on Spotify, so you can actually go listen to us on Spotify. We're available just about anywhere you can get MP3s, though. Or so, if you want to listen to the audio versions of this podcast, it's there. Um, I think we do a pretty good job at talking throughout these. So, um, that's gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna see if anybody is streaming, and then we'll throw them over there. Uh, but for now, that's gonna do it for the vod. We guys will see you next time. Bye bye.